The border between South Africa and Zimbabwe. A place of immense natural beauty, but also a place of immense lawlessness. The border stretches for 225 kilometers along the Limpopo River. It is a challenging stretch of wilderness to police, but the declining socio-economic conditions in Zimbabwe, combined with corruption and mismanagement in South Africa, has made the task of securing this border almost impossible. Driving along the border fence, which has not been properly maintained for years, the scores of illegal entry points and well-trodden paths tell a story. The story of the people who had crossed the South African border illegally. Some in search of a better life, some while smuggling contraband and participating in other criminal activities. The South African government recently spent millions to upgrade the border fence between the two countries. Now this is what's left of the original border fence between South Africa and Zimbabwe. But fences are useless if no one bothers to keep the gates closed. The new fence, often described as a washing line by its critics, is already in tatters and it is hard to imagine what exactly the 40 million rand was spent on. The South African government's apparent disinterest in securing this border has led to an increase in smuggling and illegal immigration. The Bait Bridge border post in the Limpopo province of South Africa has also become synonymous with corruption, crime and general dysfunction. This often leads to a backlog of vehicles wanting to cross the borders, choking one of the busiest trade routes in southern Africa. The backlogs also leave truck drivers and their cargo vulnerable to violent crime. It, it clearly creates a magnet uh, for uh, folks from, uh, from Zimbabwe uh, to come and uh, sell their wares because when you have um, you know, 12 kilometers of road full of trucks, it's a market, right? So people then cross over um, you know, which, using whichever means uh, to come here and uh, and sell to um, uh, to the truckers, um, so I, I suppose that in one sense it, you might say is positive, but it needs to be controlled. But the biggest challenge is uh, the the security situation that comes with that, because then you have so many people that you cannot actually account for, and um, and, and 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 there is just people in the bushes. Uh, and so when the road is blocked, um, staff have to use alternative routes to go back to uh, home or to come to work. And those alternative routes mean you get into the bushes. Uh, you use gravel roads in the bushes and it's not safe. And, and, and so as a result, uh, the whole situation then becomes very ungovernable. At some point, it becomes impossible to manage. Um, even for the authorities. And to be honest, I think this year, um, I don't know how it started, uh, but at the end, it was completely out of control. However, the challenges at the border post are certainly not a problem for everyone. Like the travelers who use this informal but well-organized border crossing where passports and customs officials are a distant memory. So this is the situation roughly 25 kilometers from the Baitbridge border post. Uh, behind me is the Limpopo River and on the other side is Zimbabwe. And as you can see, there's a very well-developed and structured uh, trading route that's popped up here over the last couple of years. These people are openly trading, they're openly crossing the border. And um, the things that are mostly transported from here are household items that are available in South Africa, but not in Zimbabwe. And um, as you can see, they're very well organized. They've got donkey cars, they've got vehicles, and um, everyone here plays a role in, in keeping this, this industry going. And if you look across the river, you can actually see on the other side, there are uh, Zimbabwean military personnel uh, welcoming these traders into the country. Uh, so obviously a lot of people involved in this network. A 
Hello, Hello ladies. Hello. How are you, Mama? Fine. What are you selling? Supplies for halfway stock? 10 rand. Yeah. 10 rand. 10 rand. 15 rand. 15 rand. 10 rand. Oh. I'm going to have a dragon. dragon. Please. 10 rand, hey. Yes, 10 rand. Okay. And two of these. The two of these? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It's nice and cold, eh? So, oh, this, one. this is a, a halfway stop for anyone on this route to stock up on fresh supplies. Messina gets very hot and you don't know how long these people are going to be in the bush on either side of the border um, when they cross into these different countries. Thank you, for Thank you very much. Thank you. The organizers on the South African side assure me that nothing dangerous passes through here. Only household goods that are either unavailable or exorbitantly expensive in Zimbabwe. So if I get this money, I'm yield too much. Yeah. I'm gonna get something to eat. If my wife wants. And how often, how often do you guys cross over? Is it daily? Once a week? I daily. Daily? Every 24-7. Okay. If they get the water, use the boat. Mm. And um, how do you find the, the South African soldiers and the police? Any problems with them? Uh, the police is coming, but uh, sometimes we're going to run away, Mara. Uh, mm. Situation again, I will look at that. There's no even a situation. There's no nothing because today I'm running away. Can you More, well, I'm here for two. So that guy will not tire. Yeah. So, okay. These couriers claim they are making an honest living and have to feed their families. A good enough reason to drive anyone to crime. But as noble as this may seem, the general disrespect for an international border also causes other problems such as poaching and smuggling. Privately owned land along the border has now become criminal highways. Unfortunately, our farmers are carrying the brunt of this problem. The smugglers um, and the robbers, of course, um, move across the um, land, game reserves. They are cutting fences on a daily basis. People cannot keep up with repair work anymore. Game theft, stock theft, theft of electrical cable, pumps, name it. Uh, and it's taking place on, on our farms um, in the area. Now, people are very quick to blame our security forces. Why, are, why is the police not doing something about this? Now, you can imagine for yourself, we sit with a border running hundreds of kilometers east and west. The Sina town as the hub in the center with more smuggling routes running from the town than you can count going to all these illegal crossing places. Now, imagine a small town police station, limited resources, add a few hundred soldiers, and when you just realize these people are overwhelmed, it is not possible for them to police this whole area. The lawlessness also impacts on game ranches and many other tourist establishments in the area. Theft and crime has gone up because they stole the old uh, border fence. Uh, the government puts up a new fence and they steal, they first start stealing all the steel that they can sell and they cut up the fence. And then of course, uh, for us as farmers, it's a problem because we have foot and mouth, we have different other diseases, we have a lot of cattle theft. Um, we can't farm like normal anymore, we have to put our cattle at, in kraal at night because they get stolen. Uh, we have to have a herdsman and dogs go with them every day to look after them. Uh, business in all for people along the river and, and close to Messina has become a problem because of that. There's no, to enforce the law is very difficult if there's no border fence. 
our biggest problem farming against the Limpopo River is the lack of fence. There is no fence to keep Zimbabwean cattle game out of South Africa. There's no electrifying. Everything gets stolen, everything gets moved to Zimbabwe. Now that the government fence is non-existent, uh, they're also starting stealing our fences. Um, unfortunately, uh, when they did the fences in the beginning on, on our property, we used a certain uh, um, 12 millimeter Y bar, which is very good for construction, uh, burglar bars and that kind of thing. So this is now starting to become a um, thing on weekends. They pick certain weekends and they just come in and they steal like 30 to 60 wise to, uh, of the uh, droppers off the fence and take it to Zimbabwe. Um, there's also the problem with that is they also come certain people nearer to town, they will take out the wise standards. All these wise standards they break off, leave the fence lapidated and then take that to the um, people that's buying scrap metal from them. One of the most prevalent cross-border crimes in this area is the smuggling of cigarettes from Zimbabwe to South Africa. According to British American Tobacco, illegal cigarettes today account for approximately 33% of all cigarettes sold in South Africa. In the informal trade, these cigarettes make up an estimated 42% of the informal market. Although the situation on the border is dire, some locals are determined to make a difference. The civil rights organization AfriForum has 176 neighborhood and farm watches across the country. These civilian safety structures were established due to the nationwide high levels of crime and police inefficiency and comprises roughly 10,000 trained volunteers. The members of one of these neighborhood watches, based in the Baitbridge area, often volunteer to help local farmers in their ongoing battle with smugglers who vandalize their fences and steal their livestock and game. The smugglers are armed and sometimes move in groups of up to 80 people. Shootouts between neighborhood watch members and smugglers are common. The contraband is then seized and the authorities notified. This must happen quickly before the smugglers return with reinforcements to reclaim their merchandise. Tonight, I will be joining one of AfriForum's neighborhood watches on one of these operations. Although these civilian safety structures are occasionally supported by the military, these are the extreme lengths that civilians need to go to to try and secure this extremely porous border between South Africa and Zimbabwe. Cigarettes are not the only thing that gets smuggled across this border. The smuggling of commercial explosives used in Zimbabwe's mining industry has also increased. These explosives are used in ATM bombings, cashing transit robberies and the illegal mining sector in South Africa. According to the South African Police Service, cocaine smuggling syndicates often fly their contraband to neighboring countries and then use South Africa's porous borders to move their narcotics into the country across land. The farm we are on at the moment borders the Limpopo River, which is the border between South Africa and Zimbabwe. Now there are a few well-established smuggling routes on this property and I was speaking to the owner earlier on and he told me that last night alone his fences were cut in seven different places as smugglers moved through his property. So at the moment we're deploying a bunch of uh, volunteers to different places on this, on this property to see if they can run into smugglers and um, try and put an end to this wave of crime that these property owners have been caught up in for the last few years. AfriForum volunteers are divided into teams and deployed kilometers apart in an effort to cover the smuggling routes along this 50 kilometer stretch of the border. Unmanned aerial vehicles with night vision capabilities are also deployed to perform aerial searches. An eerie and tense atmosphere descends over the bush as night sets in. And every one of these volunteers know the risks they are taking. Risks they have to, due to the South African government's failure to uphold law and order. The small attachment of South African Defence Force soldiers brings a slight sense of relief along with extra firepower. Although the military and police are often accused of being involved in the smuggling and illegal immigration themselves. So we've just been dropped off um, right next to one of the main smuggling routes on this property where we're going to set up an ambush um, and see if we can, can get 
catch up with any smugglers, so we create radio silence and all lights out from now on. We settle in for a long night. The smugglers are not the only danger to be aware of out here. Dangerous wildlife like elephants, buffalo and ahina roam freely. From time to time we can hear distant voices, sometimes dozing in and then fading out again. But it is hard to determine which direction they are coming from and we do not want to give our position away too early. Cigarettes smuggled by one group in one night can easily have a street value of hundreds of thousands of rands and these smugglers will not hesitate to protect their contraband with violence. It is a tense but ultimately quiet night and just before dawn we head back only to learn that one of the other groups had a less quiet night. They encountered a group of people possibly scouting for the smugglers. The group fled back in the direction of the Zimbabwean border. The next morning we learn that although one of these groups was stopped by Afriforum's neighborhood watch members, several others passed through the same property. Nine, nine Alpha. Nine Alpha, send for one nine. Over. Nine Alpha, I just received a message from the owner of the farm that his fence were cut on five places. It seems like there's five groups that went through his farm with illegal smuggling. Over. Uh, thanks for the message. Nine Alpha, one nine. Over. Okay, Nine Alpha, thank you out. Smugglers also crossed over into South Africa at various other locations. The remnants of one of these crime scenes are quickly located. So this is a typical scene where you can see that the smugglers had successfully crossed the river, the border and private property with their loot. Because these are the bags that they carry the cigarettes in and um, they bring them through and in the early hours of the morning they would get met by a support vehicle somewhere next to the road. All the cigarettes would quickly be transported um, or transferred into that vehicle and then distributed to other parts of the country. And this is what people living in border areas in South Africa have to deal with on a daily basis. They've got an observation post on the hill over there, watching the vehicles that's coming past um, left and right. Um, the roll um, wire on the left hand side and the roll wire on the right hand side are used to cover this whole section so it looks like the, the fence has not uh, been um, 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 cut and all these bushes that are um, on heaps they're used to cover this whole entrance so it looks as normal as possible as soon as the as the vehicle arrives and the, and the um, smugglers are in place they take the wire away um, and they take the bushes away and obviously within a few seconds they load um, the vehicles and they're, and they're off. So it's obviously very well planned and it's it's a very well integrated network. Yes. I mean they've got spotters on the hills, they've yeah. got guys preparing the places where they can cross and come into yeah. and hiding them and then they've got vehicles waiting. To... Exactly, exactly. So this, this isn't just a thing that's happening from Zimbabwe's side, there are people in South Africa working yes. together with these guys. It's, it's a whole coordinated network working together and the timing is perfect. Um, like we saw last night, um, the vehicle picking up the, 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 the smugglers and the, and the cigarettes, they're on time. They know exactly what time, where they're going to be and it's an integrated network that and communication is obviously a major part with it. Apart from the obvious risk of um, innocent civilians running into smugglers and into some of these groups um, and their armed guards, what other impact does it have on rural security in this area? The problem you've got with um, the, the local security is that everyone's bought into the um, um, organized crime. So you can trust no one and everyone's trust is um, the there's a, there's a price on so their loyalty is being bought and the local community is obviously suffering because they also, if they come across a, a, a major group like that, they get pulled in and they've got a price to pay if, um, to keep their mouths shut. Another major problem is the ease with which stolen and hijacked vehicles are moved out of South Africa across the Zimbabwean border. 
a crime easily observed from the air. During our 15-minute flight, we spotted two vehicles racing across the dry riverbed into Zimbabwean territory. A third got stuck in the thick sand, and the occupants darted for cover. Afriforum Neighborhood Watch members respond to the scene while notifying one of the Defense Force's reaction units about the abandoned and suspected stolen vehicle. Volunteers and soldiers give chase, but by the time they arrive, the vehicle has already been dislodged and the vehicle tracks lead straight into Zimbabwean territory. The chase is called off. Citizens of Messina, the town closest to the border, have been living with an ever-increasing amount of rampant crime. What makes it more challenging is that many officials have found ways to make a profit from these illegal activities. The Messina of today reminds me of uh, a down of the Mad Max movies. I think if we, if we should hold a competition between border towns, Messina will be crowned as the king of smugglers. Everything you can think of gets smuggled across the Limpopo River. People, motor vehicles, firearms, explosives, liquor, cigarettes, Household goods, food, I think you see more fridges and freezers going over the river to Zimbabwe than you will find in the biggest macro in South Africa. These are the risks that private citizens are willing to take to try and combat crime. It is a pity that the South African government is not nearly as committed to bringing an end to this lawlessness as these volunteers are.